Very cool. Yeah. Cause I, I think uh, number one, anytime you can speak in front of the public, it sets you up as the, the guru, right? The expert, but then to also give that um, confidence to people that it can be done. You mm. know, if you set a goal and follow a plan, it can be done. Yeah. And I think because I don't see it as anything amazing that I've done. I just see it as my job. It's just what I've done. It was what I was paid to do. So I've just done it. And I don't think that it's anything amazing. Well, obviously somebody does, TJ, because you were <laughs> you were um, submitted or nominated for the MBE. I right? wish I knew who. <laughs> uh, well, someday it'll come out. Um, for the listeners, if you don't know about the MBE, um, this is from Wikipedia. Uh, the most excellent order of the British Empire is a British order of chivalry, rewarding contributions to the arts and sciences, work with charitable and welfare organizations, and public service outside of civil service. It was established in 1917 by King George V and comprises five classes across both civil and military divisions. Now, at the very highest level, you're knighted by the queen, right? Um, but then it comes down to just the general population, you can be nominated by somebody who goes to a committee, they do background check and research on you. And they yeah. found that you were deserving. And I think that that speaks a lot. Yeah. Were you surprised? <laughs> um, yeah, very much so. I just never, ever dreamt that I would get anything like that. I mean, when I was nominated for the Women in Business Award, you know, the Businesswoman of the Year, I just thought, why me? I'm only doing a job. So then I received the MBE notification by email. So I actually ignored it and thought it was a hoax because <laughs> you wouldn't expect something like that to come from the cabinet office via email. So I, I just sat on it for a while. In fact, most of the day. Hmm. Took it through to my husband and said, well, what do you think? And he said, no nah, hoax. And then he looked on the internet, as you do, our friend Google. Yep said that the new year nomination, there was lots of people that thought that was a hoax, but because of COVID, they were, the, a lot of the cabinet office workers were working from home. So they were having to do that. So it was, okay, who do we find out from? So I actually rang the cabinet office themselves. Nice. <laughs> Interrogated them. Yeah. <laughs> and they did find it quite funny. And they said that they'd had hundreds of phone calls. I bet. The same thing but it was just congratulations, you know, are you willing to accept it? Because that's the first step is accept. Mm -hmm. um, can you complete, you know, the documentation to say who you are, that you agree with it. And also the first notification goes into the London Gazette. Okay. So they just make sure that everything's correct on that. Nice. So yeah, uh, but it didn't stop there being a hoax. I just thought mm, it could still be and didn't think anything of it. And it wasn't until the Thursday, as the announcement was made on the Saturday, I got a call from a reporter from the press. And he said who he was. Could, this, could I speak? So I said, yes. And then his first words were, so how do you feel about being nominated for an MBE? And my response was, oh, well, it's not a hoax now, because obviously you know. <laughs> and he thought it was hilarious. And it's quite funny, because everything that's gone into the press has said that I thought it was a hoax. That's funny. 